Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Now, one of my favorite things to do under the night sky is uh, gotta be to see how many uh, Messier targets I can find on that particular month. Um, now, if you don't know what the uh, Messier target is, you may have seen it referred to as like a M4 or M33 or whatever. And that M just stands for Messier, okay? And uh, Charles Messier was uh, an astronomer, uh, a French astronomer, that lived between 1730 and I think it was about 1816 or 1817, something like that. And he was actually a, a, a comet hunter and he kept coming across these uh, faint fuzzies in the, uh, in the sky that were kind of a bit of an annoyance to him really. And he just marked them down as not being comets. So, you know, future astronomers could look at this, refer to this catalog. Uh, now, today we look back on the Messier catalog as that catalog, as the Charles Messier catalog for these faint fuzzies when he's, uh, and that's what he's remembered for. Um, uh, unlike what he was actually known for at the time, was a comet hunter. Now, this list or, or catalogue um, is consists of 110 objects in total. Um, but you're not going to see all of these 110 objects. You know, it's not saying you can't see them. You can see them with the right conditions and the right telescope and being the right part of the world. Um, you can see them all. Um, but even the uh, brighter ones um, can be a little bit of a challenge to find, okay? Um, you'll find you start doing a lot of fishing. And what I mean by fishing is you, you're kind of doing this, okay? Where is it? You know, it's got to be around here somewhere. Uh, well, with this little method that I'm going to show you, it takes away all that frustration of, of, of fishing around because when you've just got a basic telescope such as this on a basic mount or a Dobsonian mount or even a fork mount, uh, we haven't got the pleasures of uh, go-to systems, uh, what's just going to automatically point to the target for us. And I can assure you, doing any method of finding it yourself is far more rewarding and satisfying than letting the computer find it for you. Because not only uh, finding these objects yourself, it's, it's not only more rewarding, but it's also more educational for you. Um, and it, it's just, you know, it's a lot better in learning, the, you're learning your way around the night sky when you do it manually without the aid of a, a go-to telescope. Now, with this little method I'm going to show you, um, you're going to make a little uh, template, if you like, um, and it's really going to aid us in finding and stop all this fishing about. And uh, and it's something I use. I use it quite regularly. Um, th this method and. Uh, I do advise you to watch the video through because there's a few little tips on the way of using this method that's uh, that's going to help you actually target and, and make it actually work and, uh, and make it easy for you to find instead of more of a struggle. The first thing you're going to need to do, obviously, is decide on what target you uh, want to observe that particular night. And uh, more importantly, what constellation is in or what constellation are near, uh, constellations, should I say, are nearby it. Okay, now at the time of recording this video, we're mid-February. Um, so I'm going to choose one of my favourite uh, constellations, or Riga, or Riga, however you want to pronounce it, uh, the big pentagon in the sky. So Riga is, like, like I say, after sunset, is pretty much uh, directly overhead. And if you, if you know the uh, big constellation Orion, okay, unmistakable, with the three stars in a line uh, showing its belt, um, it's, if you carry on going up, straight up, you can't miss the big pentagon in the sky. And the thing is with Auriga, it's quite a bright constellation and with it having this uh, distinctive shape, it's quite easy identifiable. Now, within Auriga, there's three interesting targets. That is M36, M37 and M38, all quite close together. And they're perfect for this example. Even though these are not that difficult to find, um, it'll just be a, a good demonstration how to use this method for you to find other deep sky objects. 
of course, the best thing of uh, finding out where any um, nighttime object is, and that is a good star chart or app. Okay, now there is a few apps out there, free apps that are available, but uh, my recommendation would be Stellarium. Okay, it's, it's everything you'll ever need. There is a free version, there is a paid version, um, both on, um, no, I think it's just the paid versions on the um, app itself, and I think the free, free versions on web. Uh, but it's a fantastic um, uh, planetarium to use, and, and, and it's so accurate, see, and that's important. So let's just say you've got your, your uh, star chart on your phone, tablet, even your PC, it doesn't matter, as long as you've got a screen with um, your constellation and deep sky object that you want, um, that you want to find, okay, that it's, it's, it's on that picture. Now, what you need to do now is turn your brightness on full. If you're using a, uh, a, a phone, okay, or a tablet, turn your brightness on full, then get some A4 printing paper. That'll do, ordinary printing paper. And just loosely tack it to the front of your phone. You can use blue tack, something like that, okay, just so it's secure. Now draw out, or should I say trace out, the constellation or nearby constellation, in our case we're using Auriga, okay, or Auriga, or however you want to pronounce it, okay, and draw that out, and just draw the stars that are important to you, okay, that you're going to easily identify when you go out in the night sky. Then what you want to do is just mark the uh, deep sky object that you want to look, and maybe mark that in a different co different colour or something like that, okay, the more simple that you do this, the better in the long run. Okay, so now once you've done that, okay, in our example here, um, yours will look different to this, yours will be on pen and paper obviously, but for, for, for simplicity I'm just putting a project it on the screen. Okay, so where I'm using Auriga, okay, and I want to find uh, M36, okay, so I mark it where it needs to be, okay. So you'll have a similar pattern for whatever uh, deep sky object you're looking for. Now, this is where the little trick comes in, okay, that's really going to help you. Like I say, it sounds simple, but it really is effective. Okay, now what you're going to do is make, is you're going to triangulate that area, if you like, and we're going to draw a line from our deep sky object to a nearest star, okay, or any star that's going to form a triangle and do the same with the, uh, to another star, if you get what I mean, like this. Okay, now can you see how we're forming this triangle? And there's a shape to this triangle. Your triangle could look like this, it could look like that, okay? But wherever that point is, is where the deep sky object is. Now you can see already how we've simplified matters, okay? Just with this, now this simple template that we've made, it's a lot easier for you to understand. You don't have to mark, um, uh, the every name of the star, even though, as I forgot to mention, there is the amazing Capella uh, being the uh, dominant star in uh, Auriga, or Auriga. Um, okay, so you don't even have to put all the uh, names of the stars in. That's unimportant at this uh, stage. We want to know where we can, how to find this target. Okay, so this is a nice, simple design you've got with no distractions. So let's just go on to how you actually use it and transfer all this information into the night sky. Okay, you're armed with your little uh, piece of paper with your diagram on, okay? Now, find first of all, find your constellation. We're outside now, imagine we're outside. Find the constellation you need, okay? And point your telescope roughly in the area it needs to be, okay? Um, should have done this before. Do you know, I always, I always forget to set my telescope up. Just turn the eyepiece around so it's as though it's more realistic, okay? Right, so we've pointed, okay? And we now know roughly this is where we need to be. Now, you have your piece of paper in your hand. Now, you may need a, a red light to illuminate it a little bit, okay? And the way to do this is to hold your diagram up, okay, and have your eye close to the um, eye, uh, to the finder, whether it's a crosshair or a red dot, it doesn't matter, okay? And have a look at that triangle that you've made, okay? And what you want to do now is you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit here, but project that triangle image up onto the position in the sky, okay? In our case, it's Auriga. 
okay and we're going to try and imagine by holding this little diagram that you've that you've already made at the side there so you can see both things okay now keep both eyes open it's always important whenever using a finder scope whether you're using this method or just literally finding something always keep both eyes open okay so in our case i've got well in my case i've got a red dot okay so i'll have a red dot that looks like it's projected on the sky i can see where my triangle use needs to be and by finally adjusting your telescope okay and it's always probably best to use your slow motions at this point okay it can be a little bit fiddly we want to hand like this okay but it's a lot f less hassle than giving it one of these you know where you're looking it's oh where is it it's got to be somewhere around here okay doing this is going to take a lot of that out it's not going to take it all out okay you still mean to just once you do look in the eyepiece so just a little bit but we'll cover that in a minute okay so we've got our piece of paper we're fine we're finally moving our telescope until the dot we can see is 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 the lines look the same you see where i'm coming from i hope i'm trying i hope i'm making this system clear because it is a really easy uh, thing to do but um it's it's a lot hard to explain and it's so useful it really does work okay now once you're roughly in the ballpark you want a low powered eyepiece in okay your lowest eyepiece you've got and have a look and see if you can see your target okay now if you do need to do any adjustments if it's not there okay like i say use your slow motion controls that's always the best way and just slightly move them from side to side and now if you've been at the eyepiece for several you know minutes and you've not seen anything you've not been successful now that this could be a few things it could be simply the conditions are not right the aperture in your telescope may be not big enough okay because some of these objects are incredibly dim all right and you need extremely good conditions that's all i can say okay most telescopes will show a lot of the messier targets but not under light pollution okay so don't give up okay if you can't find it on this one uh, draw another diagram out okay and have a go at another target using this triangulation method of projecting it onto the night sky give it a go it really does work like I say, I, I really do hope you give this method a, a go. And, um, and it's one of these things where you can keep your hobby going even in the daytime or on rainy nights. Because on those uh, rainy nights or, or um, even in the daytime, like I say, you can draw out all your uh, targets that you want to plan for that week or that night or whatever. Do it all in the daytime, you see, and then you're doing astronomy in the daytime and you're still learning and you're keeping that hobby going. Well, that about wraps it up for another video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that thumbs up button um, if you like the video, because it really does help the channel. In the meantime, happy stargazing. Take great care of yourselves, and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.